Oliver stays with his family in London for two months, and during that time, he makes a good amount of profit by showcasing and then selling the livestock that he had brought with himself from Blefusco. Eventually, his insatiable desire to travel and visit foreign lands intrigues him to get aboard another ship named Adventure. After a few weeks at sea and dealing with multiple storms, Adventure gets pushed to the shores of a strange country. The captain orders a few of his men to go on land and find fresh water, and Gulliver asks his permission to go with them to explore the new country. During that short trip, Gulliver leaves the party for a little while and after finding the island uninhabited, returns to the shore. On his way and before reaching the beach, he sees the sailors getting on the boat and leaving without him after getting chased by a giant animal. Seeing that Gulliver runs away to avoid facing the beast and after a while arrives on top of a hill from where he sees a well-cultivated country. The first thing that amazes him is the size of the grass with each blade reaching 20 feet tall. He then continues what he considers a high road, but later finds out that is only a footpath through a field of barley. A mile down the road, all Gulliver can see are cornfields, and a bit later, when he tries to step over a hedge, he sees one of the inhabitants of that new country. A giant with a massive scythe in his hand, calling to his fellow farmers with a thunderous voice to come and work on the other part of the field. Gulliver tries to avoid getting killed and squashed by the giants, and right when one of them is about to step on him, he screams as loud as he can. The giant sees Gulliver, and after examining him, puts him in his pocket and takes him to his master. The giant farmer and his workers sit in a circle and observe the tiny man's motions as he bows down to them and tries to communicate. Gulliver sits on his knees and begs. He then brings out his purse of gold and empties it before the giants, but they don't understand what it is for. Seeing Gulliver's behavior, the giant, convinced that he must be an intelligent creature, takes him to his home. During dinner, Gulliver eats with his tiny knife and fork, which delights the giants. Suddenly, the farmer's son grabs him by his foot and lifts him in the air. The giant slaps his son and tells him to leave the table. Gulliver, being afraid that the son might hold a grudge against him afterward, begs the master to forgive him, which the father agrees. After observing the farmer's cats and dogs, which were bigger than three elephants, the giant's wife puts Gulliver in her bed and makes him a blanket with her handkerchief. A couple of hours later, two rats as big as dogs attack Gulliver, and he defends himself with his sword. Next, the giant's nine-year-old daughter takes an extreme liking to the tiny man and becomes his caretaker. She houses Gulliver in her doll's house and teaches him their language, which he picks up pretty quickly. The word spreads in town and giants from every country and village nearby line up at the farmer's house to look at the little man. The farmer, realizing that he can make a lot of money by showing Gulliver to the entire country, takes him and his daughter on a road trip and after stopping in a few towns, they arrive at the city of Lorberlgrad, or the pride of the universe. Days pass and the multitude of shows put so much pressure on Gulliver that he begins losing weight and looking unhealthy. Seeing that, the farmer tries to force him into more performances so he could make as much money as he could before the tiny man dies. At the same time, the Queen of the Giants, or the Brobdenagians, hears about Gulliver and buys him from the farmer for 1,000 gold coins. At this moment, Gulliver asks the Queen to allow the farmer's daughter, whom he calls Glomdelklitch, or Nurse, to stay with him, to which she agrees. Next, the Queen takes Gulliver to the King, who at first mistakes him for an odd creature and then a clockwork creation or a robot. When Gulliver relays the story of his arrival to their country, the King is not convinced, and even after the farmer's daughter approves of the little man's account, he answers that this must be something that was made up by the farmer to sell him for the highest price. Therefore, he sends for three of his best scholars, and they all conclude that he cannot be a natural creature because he's so tiny that he has no means of supporting himself. Hearing this, Gulliver implores the king to allow him to speak, and tells him about where he has come from, and that in his country everything is to scale, and there are millions of people like him. The scholars and the king are not convinced, and repeat their claim that the farmer must have taught him very well to be able to make up stories 
stories like that. The king then dismisses the scholars and sends for the farmer and after examining his story, starts to get warmer toward believing Gulliver's story. Gulliver starts his life at the palace and becomes the queen's favorite entertainment. Once, when dining with the king in the presence of other nobles and courtiers, Gulliver gives him the full account of his country, its position in Europe, and their wars and inspirations. The king laughs and wonders how those insignificant creatures could feel so important that they wage war against each other and believe they have a fully materialized civilization. Hearing that, Gulliver at first feels offended. Then as he observes the giant lords and ladies in the ballroom, he realizes that customs and politics could be equally ridiculous everywhere in the world. Next, the queen's dwarf, who is about 30 feet tall and is extremely jealous of Gulliver for taking his place, after a back and forth argument, picks him up and drops him in a bowl of cream. Gulliver tries swimming, but the cream is too thick. At this point, his nurse rushes to his aid and pulls him out. As a punishment, the dwarf is forced to drink the entire bowl of cream, and then he is sent to serve another lady instead of the queen. Days pass and Gulliver is completely taken over by life with giants. A few incidents happen now and then, but he gets used to his new circumstances. During his many conversations with the king, he realizes that the giants have very simple minds and their customs are often too shallow. When he speaks more to the king about England, the monarch wonders why people in Europe are so violent and calls them a race of pernicious vermin that nature ever suffered to crawl upon on the surface of the earth. Two years later, during a trip to the south coast of the Brobdenagian's country, Gulliver and his nurse both fall ill and he asks to be left alone to rest in his box. Suddenly an eagle swoops in and grabs the box with him in it and flies away. A few minutes later, the bird drops the box into the ocean. After a while, Gulliver hears someone pulling the box and telling him that a carpenter will soon be there to get him out. Gulliver, thinking that he is talking to a giant, replies that they could just open the lid with their finger, to which the strangers laugh. And hearing their astonishment, Gulliver realizes that he's speaking to people of his size. Aboard the ship, Gulliver relays the story of his adventures in the land of the giants and shows the sailors some of the objects that he had brought with him. If you have been getting value out of this channel and you would like to support it, you can now become a member by clicking on the join button. Or you could use Venmo or buy me a coffee directly from the links in the description box. Thank you very much.